Alright guys, Touch Crowd back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your take so far with more potential hints that Optic Dallas is just around the corner. We also had this massive Black Ops 2 throwback tournament conclude last night. One in the end in pretty surprising fashion by the Chicago Huntsman boys over at the Complexity Dynasty. Very much intriguing your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button is the best thing you can do to help this channel reach more people. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already put a right hand corner. You know the drill. Firstly, this between Clayster and Scum are pretty funny back and forth ready. Dude, I should have. I'm sorry, Scum going to this, uh, you yeah, know, festival or whatever but um, I mean yeah closer I imagine that well scum as a result of this not playing I imagine in this uh, throwback tournament we'll look at it in a second but Clayster most certainly was and no well this firstly from Sim Goodnight Brothers Vanguard is almost here right because um, well it's only a few days away we're nearly in November November the 5th Vanguard officially drops now um whether that's what Dashi is referring to in this tweet it probably is but I'm reaching new levels like um yeah of course it, like there's Valorant to play and stuff like this he didn't play in the Black Ops 2 throwback or whatever but um I mean still I imagine like he's waiting for Vanguard to drop as a lot of players are at the present time. At the same time, though, we've also seen kind of, uh, well, concerns really from Shotzi, or at least, um, you know, frustrations every single time there's a guy called Optic Dallas or whatever that goes in Shotzi's Twitch chats. Shotzi's like, I mean, like, yeah, come on, like, you know, I wish it could have been announced already. I'm really sure Shotzi said a couple of weeks ago, we looked at that, um, it was like, you know, if it had been up to me, it already would have been announced, right, this Optic Dallas move. But, um, still, it's taken its time. Like, um, even some of the other organizations as well, like, we're expecting Washington will take their time because they've got to figure some things out there with actually getting the spot sorted and like general manager coaching staff like um there well obviously a new organization coming in and you'd imagine they'd have to wait until after obviously dallas confirmed their stuff so that it's actually known that this spot is officially up for sale and washington are apparently going to swoop it up but um i mean paris haven't announced we've got a uh, london of course we know their roster for ages they haven't announced so kind of um kind of strange really why things are taking this long but uh, still i guess we'll see here into november and well this then from hastro over there who of course is going to be part of this optic envy merger you thought i was a sleep didn't you and zoom are dropping the eyes emojis in the reply so maybe this is an indication the thing is though of course today is a sunday usually announcements like this don't drop on a sunday just because like people generally are doing other stuff on the weekend i think it makes more sense probably to do it midweek sometime but um and also like because we think it's going to be announced through the process or at least like probably at the end of a process episode like um i'm expecting them really to like announce it in advance they're not just going to drop the process on us or just drop the announcement on us they're probably going to say look the process is coming up tomorrow at this time and um at the end of that episode probably will get the roster announcement or something that'll at least be my guess at the present time but maybe Hastro is saying look it's been a while since I've done too much of the timeline here we are like we're back in business getting ready to go for this stuff but uh, well let's dive into this then so as Hitch says the um why well, funding for two more show matches I gotta get done want to do the first battle of LA on launch rings that's really cool to see but um of course we've got another show match to discuss before then but Slasher says he's down so it seems like um well Slasher versus Octane Los Angeles Grillers versus Los Angeles Thieves that's going to be a show match right at the start of Vanguard Guards, which is um, really exciting. I mean, Hitch and the TST guys absolutely killed it this offseason. They kill it every single offseason, but just wanted to give a shout out because, well, we've got to talk about a big throwback tournament. That being, of course, this one that, um, well, was played last night. When Eggs, Clayster, Crim6, and TP last played Black Ops 2 together, they beat Millennium to secure complexity of Grand Finals win at ESWC in France in 2013. They'll reunite today in this tournament, which is, um, you know, pretty remarkable to think about, to be honest. It was really interesting to see the fact that, like, Crim6 and Clayster, of course, are current COD pros, and they're going to continue to play into next year. TP's, I mean, he's been a Warzone player for quite a while now, absolutely killing it on his stream. But then Aix has been retired. I mean, technically he's not retired for some reason. Like, um, he was still kind of competing in challenges. But he's been away from the game for a very long time, really, at least playing at this time of level. And um, for these guys to come back as they did and pick up where they left off, in a sense, was really impressive, right? And it does make you wonder what um, would have happened in a different era. Like, um, you know, obviously they were so dominant in that era on that game. Like, um, would things have been different if they'd have, if these guys had come along a little bit later? Later, like would they still have been as dominant compared to today's players? It's an interesting question mark, but um, as it is an out zoomer not watching this tourney, plus make better content. Apparently, this is the new like Twitter reply meta people do with these plus things. But um, I mean, yeah, maybe Zoomer's also kind of impatient for his announcement not happening yet, because I imagine there might be some stuff on the org side, which means um, well, it's not officially allowed to be confirmed. I don't really know. I'm pretty sure Zoom would have wanted it to be done by now, but um, clearly that is not the case as yet. Hitch says this, and I mean thirty thousand dollars raised. I'm pretty sure overall their throwback tournaments they 
raised over like 42 grand. It's pretty remarkable. Or um, at least in that ballpark. Pretty sure this one on its own, they raised like $36,000, which is just incredible for Movember and men's uh, mental health awareness. So really just awesome stuff all around. And well, as Teep says, got the bands back together for tomorrow. So Eggs, Crimson, Clacer and Teepy, I guess coming in here as favourites, I suppose, even though um, they haven't really played Call of Duty together for a very long time since, um, I guess, well, pretty much this team of four won the World Championship back in Ghost without, well, it was Karma for Clacer at the time. And then, in, um, well, in, of course, in Black Ops 2, the World Championship was won by Farika Impact. But after that, it was pretty dominant. We'll look at it later today. But as Madcat says, this even like an OG European player, he came and played this tournament as well. This Black Ops 2 tournament, the most fun I've had in content since Black Ops 3 Infinite Warfare times. I really miss watching Madcat play on a professional level. He was a fantastic player, but um, just fell out of the scene, really. Fell out of love with the game, as he says here in the last couple of years. So disappointing, but uh, there were some great moments in this one. But here it is from Clayser. Someone tell me what Black Ops 2 classes I even used. Like, um, it's such a, there's so many things you can do in Black Ops 2. That's what I love about the game. Like, so many different weapons are viable. The Black Ops 2, of course, the M8 is just ridiculous. But you've got the AN-94, the Scar H as well. The FAL would be good if it wasn't banned and competitive. The MSMC, the MP7, the Scorpion, for example. Like, um, some people even use the PDW, because I'm pretty sure the Plutonium game that they play in the, on PC, it's like the pre-patch version. So the DSR is still pre-patch. The PDW is still pre-patch, so it's still really good. Like, um, there's other things that you can use in the game as well. But there's so many things that are viable in terms of, like, um, you know, the, the way the perks are set up. Like, in Search and Destroy, for example, you have to choose between Dead Silence, Extreme Conditioning, Dexterity, like, Tack Mask. Like, um, there's so many things you can do. Like, uh, you know, do you want to run an EMP? Because they're viable stuns or flashes. Like, everything is so perfectly done. It does make you miss it, really. And whether they just hit a massive fluke on that one, to be honest, compared to... Because they can't seem to replicate Black Ops 2 in future titles. But anyway, this was the first clip. This I thought was entertaining because um, this is something you can do on Raid. It doesn't really work in this most recent title, but it did work back in the day. And um, right at the start of Black Ops 2 as well. If you just uh, walk and kill yourself, basically, off that garage, spawn right off the rip, you'll spawn up the driveway closer to the hard point and get um, a bit of an advantage. So Clayster comes and gets the 200 points for capturing it already, and then just goes on a monster streak straight off the rip with the M8A1, and um, just immediately gets uh, well, gets streaks right off the bat. So just incredible. First map back on Black Ops 2 with the squad. You know how we rock. I mean, Clayster just popping absolute pieces. And I mean, this is accuracy as well. Strafe AR brings a tear to my eye. That's uh, something we haven't really seen in the last few Call of Duties. That, um, I mean, like, you know, the SMGs maybe don't, don't strafe as quickly, but they're very, um, well, they're very the hard, fast tempo, obviously. But the ARs, like, um, in these games, like, you can strafe really well with them. And, like, it's so quick in Black Ops 2 with the with the ARs, with the, well, if you pull out stock on them, like, you can strafe around the place really, really quickly indeed. And um, I think a lot of pros really enjoy that compared to currently when you're kind of just sitting there on your own. I mean, look at this. Clay's is on a merciless and he's barely even spawned into the map. So pretty ridiculous stuff. But to get, I guess, to be expected. This also from Arsties, who I guess really didn't play this game, at least on a competitive level back in the day. 52 bomb for the vet, he says right here. So he was like absolutely destroying people. I'll have to just throw up a couple of clips at the end of this video or at least at the end of the video later today or in coming days because um, he's absolutely world star people in this one. This is against Machilla and Co. They played in the bracket. We also got this then from Envoy. So these were the other teams that were, this is the other team that was kind of the favourite then, right? With Envoy, Arsatis, Pristini, and of course, like Gunless. Effectively, some of the Chicago Huntsman guys during the Modern Warfare season, when they didn't have Pristini and Gunless at the same time, of course, they had Scump and Formal, plus a combination of the other four. But um, this, of course, are a pretty good squad to really look back on. And well, Envoy says this, reverse swept the Unite squad with like Nameless, Ricky, and, and John, and those guys. Winners finals versus complexity they play now. So this is how things go. This is in terms of the brackets. So the winners finals goes the way of complexity. They get three, well, they're three zero Envoy's boys. But, um, you know, the Chicago Huntsman guys, they go down to losers, they beat out Exotics team, and then they come back and absolutely world star the complexity guys in the grand finals. They 6-0 them. I'm pretty sure Krim said something funny, like, um, our plan was either to 3-0 them and just win the grand finals then and there, or it was to just get 6-0 to get this thing over with, because I think there was a lot of waiting involved. Like, um, they kind of got iced in the sense the complexity guys. They won their series. It took ages for the other series to finish. So, um, I think they were kind of not particularly warmed up by the time the grand final was being played. So, it would have been nice to see maybe their teams on an equal playing field in that sense but still I mean Complexity did a good job and um, Chicago Hunts would get the better of them in the end as Gunner says Crimson I shot got a 200 meg pre-workout before that match used to no chance fatty no reply from Crimson to this one as of yet but I thought it was pretty entertaining and yeah as Envoy goes $15,000 Black Ops 2 TSD throwback champs with RC's Gunner and Bustini so um, yeah pretty impressive stuff with these guys but yeah Complexity go down at the ends just so uh, crazy to see uh, how good they were really coming back and just how good Black Ops 2 is as a game it's um, it's beautiful stuff and this is what Clayster says on the matter right especially given the last Call of Duty's we've had for the last few seasons. Wow, it is so fun to play a real Call of Duty again. Had a blast playing with Cod again. Shouts to Hitchride for throwing the best throwback tournaments. We gotta start a Black Ops 2 beer league or something. That's the thing, right? A lot of pros would consider 
this to be like a real Call of Duty. The way the games work, the way the hardpoint spawns work, and um, just like everything about it, the way how well it's balanced and stuff, the way the movement works, that there's no slide cancelling or stuff like this. It's, um, it's all about strafing and positioning and awareness and this type of stuff that really makes a great Call of Duty game that um, you know hasn't really necessarily been the case the last several titles, which I'm sure the pros are kind of frustrated about. We saw Mad Cat saying it, right? He was like, look, if I didn't fall out of the love with the game the last few years, I'd still be competing at a very high level, like he was on Spice, for example, back in Infinite Warfare, winning stage one playoffs. Clayster, of course, still competing going into this year, but um, I mean, yeah, it's just um, diff interesting to see that the pros' perspectives really on this stuff, especially as JP Chris says, analyst for the subliners, Black Ops 2 Remastered when, which um, it would be fantastic to see. Of course, it's great that you still can play it on Plutonium, Plutonium.pw, I'm pretty sure is the website. You can go there, download it on the PC, and play it just how these pros did yesterday, and um, it, it's really cool to see. Just to finish off with this, actually, from Connor, he actually gets a really nice 1 versus 3 ace on a standoff search and destroy against Glaister. It's only right since I put them on Twitter. Here's us getting 1 versus 3. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, tell us those YouTube overlords. This is a good video. Others like you should see it as well. And I'm growing the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you guys, as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, no, I got it, I got it. Yeah. Go, go, go. Oh, they probably think we're not playing. They probably go, think go, we're not go, playing. Go, 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 go. Nothing mid, nothing mid, nothing mid. They're smoking down the ramp. Going blue van. We are dead. Is that him? Jumped out Jumped of the top. Jumped out van. No van. Date on it. Dead. He's there, he's there. On top, laundry. Top, top, top. Yeah, on top, on top. Dead. Well. On point. On the stairs, dead. Up window. Good <laughs> <laughs> hold point, yeah. They could flip. I got mid. Yeah. I'm holding I outer. Oh no, he's laundry stairs. I'm gonna die. I got mid, I got mid. Down, 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 down. Blue van, Tyler. Dead? Yeah. Mid? Oh, top, mid top, 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 top. Uh, one shot dead. Flip him, flip him, flip him, flip him. Flip this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one dead. off my Hellstorm. No, no, no. no. White van, uh, Hellstorm. Yeah, one off this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got mid. I reached top part. Uh, top part, part, part. Art. Art. He's not peeking. They're in glass. They're going to go mid heavy. I got it. <laughs> you running out? Two van, two van, 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 van. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Oh, mid. I Rap. lapped my health score. Two dead, two dead, two dead. Window. Okay. Call straight, call straight, lay down, lay down. Last guy, last guy. Get the point, get the point. I got it, I got it, I got it. That should be close. One? He's blue, blue. Already pushed middle. Blue pushed middle, blue pushed middle, Moach. Grave, might be grave. I'm close to 60. Two dead, two dead. Put your streak. One shot, Alec. One shot behind the car. Close on you. Alright, he spawned there. Alright, left. Cop car, cop car. I got your statue, my statue, Chris. Two. Statue, mid statue and left, mid statue and left. Bricks, 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 bricks. Chest, bricks, you have shrieks, that's a plus one. Huge. Okay. Uh, piss on him bad. Like. Good job, three. Uh, uh, stun your middle, stun your middle. I'm holding blue, I'm holding blue right now. I didn't stun anything middle. Hit her middle. I didn't hit anything middle. Two dead, two dead, two dead. Back right, back right, uh, Moach. I don't see the guy back right, I'm full flat.